Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are connected. You're welcome to the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I thank you for this wonderful time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your children that are listening. Holy Spirit, I decrease totally for you to increase. It is all about you. Less of me, more of you. And give us the grace, Lord, my Father, not only to listen to your word, but to practicalize it. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. The, word, the Lord has a word for you. This moment, I don't know what time you connected. Morning, afternoon, evening, it doesn't matter. The Lord has a word for you. And I know that whosoever it is, the Lord will bless you and you will practicalize what you hear in the mighty name of Jesus. Just a quick one, as I always say, what the Lord has for you is a topic called, you will get through the storm. It's just like a word, just a word of encouragement that you will get through the storm. And before I forget, if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Try and subscribe, please. Try and subscribe and then share the video. You know, it helps. It's a form of evangelism. You will get through the storm. Let's go to the book of Mark 6, Mark 6, chapter 46. I'm going to be reading from verse 46 to 52. Mark 6, I'm reading from the NLT version. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head back across the lake to Bethsaida while he sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in the boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them, but when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. What is a storm? Everybody has different definition for what a storm is. But obviously a storm is always an unpleasant experience. Either while you are obeying the instruction of God or if you are not. You see, as a child of God, we will experience storms. In life, we will experience storms. It's just that the storms come in different ways. And in most times as a child of God, the storms come oftentimes when you are obeying the word of God. You know, sometimes you look at it and say, oh, I'm, I'm actually obeying the word of God. Why am I going through this? Because Jesus Christ told them in verse 45, he said, immediately after this, Jesus insisted his disciples get into the boat. It was the Lord that insisted. I'm sure they wanted to stay with him. But because Jesus Christ had to stay alone to pray to Jehovah. So he told them, he said, go. You know, insisting is like, I mean what I'm saying. Go into the boat. I will meet you. So they followed the word of Jesus Christ. I don't know the instruction that you followed, that the Lord gave you specifically, and you follow the instruction. And yet it seems that there is a storm. In fact, you're looking at it that, is it that I didn't hear well from the Holy Spirit? Or paraventure, I followed my flesh. My brother, my sister, when you obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, when you obey what the Lord tells you to do, there will be storms. There will be storms. So storm is an unpleasant situation. Experience either while obeying the instruction of God or even when you're not obeying the instruction of God. So when you're obeying the instruction of God, you will experience storm. And then in life, generally, you will experience storm. I've gone through storms while obeying the instruction of God. I've gone through storm. While you are not even obeying, you are just a normal way of life, you will experience storm. Number two, another thing that we must note about storm is that it usually happens at night. It usually happens at night. Not necessarily in the night. Not necessarily that oh, it's night time. So it's, uh, no, it's not necessary. Let's go to verse 47, 47. It says, late that night. Late that night. So in night, you know, the Bible says that don't, 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 don't cry my endure for the night. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy will definitely come in the morning. In the morning means a new dawn. There's a song that the Lord has given me for the past two months. And I tell you, since that song has been ringing, as the Holy Spirit has whispered that song into my ears, I've experienced it. He says, it's the journey of a new dawn. People, it's different version. But one of the things I know with that song was, it's a journey of a new dawn. It's a journey of a new dawn. He has come. It's a journey of 
of a new dawn. It's a journey of a new dawn. It's a journey of a new dawn. It has come. It's a journey of a new dawn. And that song is for somebody listening. It's a brand new beginning for you. Though you've wept last night, literally you slept, you wet your pillow with tears. The Lord is sending me to you right now to tell you that it is a new dawn. So though weeping may endure for a night, the night is the dark moment. The night is a moment that it's only you that understands. That is a night that when you shut the door of your house, of your room, or wherever you are alone, you are in tears. But when you come out, you are smiling for others to see that there's nothing wrong with you. You put on the best powder, you rub powder, you do everything. You do your makeup if you want to do makeup. You dress very well. And everybody's looking at you and say, oh, she's so nice. Oh, it's so sweet. It looks so nice. Oh, I don't think this man has a problem. But when you close the door, just you and your maker, you begin to cry and say, Father, why me? Why am I going through all of these things? So a night time is usually not necessary at night, but a moment of loneliness, a moment whereby no one seems to understand. A moment whereby you've stopped telling people about your problem because at the end of the day, they cannot help you. You know, so it's a moment whereby even when others give you advice, the problem is still there. Remember the story of Naaman? Naaman had leprosy. Neman was literally a big man in the society. He was he was he, he, he had others that were listening to him. He was a he, he was a soldier. And he was not just an ordinary soldier, he was a major general in, in that context. But yet, my brother, my sisters, unfortunately for Neman, he had a bot. I'm sure when he closed this door, that leprosy he looks at it and says, This is a bot. He's seen it. So that storm you are looking at, it is right in front of you. I don't know what storm it is. It could be marital storm. Yourself and your husband, you dress very well. In fact, you wear the same clothing. But the moment the door closes, you begin to argue. And then you begin, to, you are not enjoying your marriage. It could be children. Yes, your children dress very well. But there's one of your child that is giving you trouble. There's that storm, different storm. It could be financial storm. The storms comes in different ways. And most times, at night means a time that only you. That is, nobody seems to understand. It's just you. No matter how people console you. You know, I remember one of my aunties that lost her husband. She was weeping that a very a long time. And she said, nobody, everybody will leave. It's going, just going to be only me. That is what a storm is. So a storm is something at night. You know, at night it's always dark, silent. Night is very silent. Night has a voice, very silent. Night is, storm is usually at night. Then, one thing we must note about a storm is that Let's go to verse 48. It says, he saw that they were in serious trouble. The Lord knows about your storm. The Lord knows about your storm. If you're a child of God, the Lord is watching. He knows about the storm. Jesus Christ saw them. He saw what they were going through. Do you know that the Lord Almighty in the book of Matthew, the Bible says the Lord watches over the sparrow. That is the birds of the air. The Lord makes sure that they eat. They have breakfast. They have lunch. They have dinner. Isn't that interesting? They even have desserts. They have um, pudding. They, all, they have all of those things. So the Lord watches over them and says, ah, as this bird, bird parrot, have you eaten this morning? Bird, um, uh, what's this? Woodpecker. Have you had some? The Lord watches over them to have their breakfast. Everything. Talk more of you. That is you that the Lord created in his own image and likeness. So the Lord watches, he knows, he sees. Now, we're not going to notice something in that Bible passage. Why would the Lord see and not respond instantly? You know, sometimes you look at it and say, you say, but Father, I was ex you told me to do this and I'm obeying your wife. Let's go to verse 48. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. Rowing hard, they were using their human efforts. Whenever you use your human effort to solve a storm, it draws Jesus away. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, it says, Cost is the one that puts his, his, his hope in a man. If the person is cost. When you put your confidence in man, it cost is on that person. When, when the, the Bible says that when there's prosperity, the person will not see it. Cause is the one that puts his trust or confidence in a man. So when you put it in, when you, when you, when you put 
that's when, when you go into a storm and then you feel you can handle it yourself, he draws the Lord backwards and says, okay, handle it. And he's looking at you. So sometimes, oftentimes as children of God, you might not even know that. But the point, you know, as simple as it is, most times we know we have this gift that the Lord has given us that the devil can never offer you. And that is prayer. You can never hear the devil tell you pray. He can actually tell you to go to a program. Yeah, go. Because he knows that when you get there, it's going to distract you. But hear the devil tell you pray. Why don't you pray? You can't get that. As children of God, we have that gift of prayer. But most times, I think it's over familiarity or we just assume that I've prayed about it. So most times when storm comes, we become overwhelmed with the storm. And sometimes we'll put emotions in it and say, Father, I'm doing your will. As an individual, I've been through that before. I've, I, I remember years ago, about maybe like eight years ago or about seven years ago, I received the letter that I wasn't happy with. And I started querying God. I said, Lord, you said I should pay my tithe. I pay my tithe. You said I should be doing your will. I do your will. And that was the time I was about to write my first book, Are You Truly a Child of God? And I said, look, I'm even writing what you told me to do. What's happening? And the storm came. And the Lord was looking at me. And after querying and shouting and all that, I still went back to God in the place of prayer in the night. Because I know he's the only one that can help me. So sometimes we assume, there's that false assumption to say that, oh, I've prayed about it. Meanwhile, the moment you begin to call others, that is, I'm not talking about, like, for instance, in the ministry, people call to say, let's pray together. There's nothing wrong with that. Or there's something, you know, iron sharpened iron. But the situation is, when that storm comes, what is the first thing you do? The disciples began to roll against the wind. Against the storms, against the wind and the waves, they face the storm. They face the 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 forces. You know, literally, they, they, they were not descending to understand that there's a force behind it. But we're not going to go into that now. The Lord has just given me an inspiration right now. You know, so when you lean on yourself, when you lean on human effort, when you lean on your intellectual effort, when you lean on your mental or connection or your physical, whatever it is, the Lord draws near. So note, your effort will determine Jesus' response. Your effort is going to determine Jesus' response. Jesus didn't go immediately because they depended on human effort. Guess what? He even almost passed them. Let's read for them. Jesus came to, at about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on them. He intended to go past them. He intended to go past them them my sisters my brothers in the lord as you're connected that's time you're going through the question the lord asked you today is that have you prayed about it okay after prayer what was the next step you took because what you can say oh i prayed 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 i even fasted what was the step you took when we say when the lord says lean on him do you know what leaning is leaning means that you're like this when he moves you move when he doesn't move it says in the book of Proverbs, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct your paths. In all thy ways. So when you acknowledge him, he will direct. Lean upon him. They that wait upon the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved, that abided forever. So when you lean upon him, when you lean, even the young shall grow weary. Will go faint. There will be those moments. He says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall be like, the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So when you lean upon the Lord, when he moves, you move. When he doesn't move, you are still staying there. My brother, my sisters, in the Lord. The more you use human effort, the more it draws the Lord away. We need to be very careful. He almost passed them. So the more we lean on human efforts, the Lord will just be looking at you. Then you seems it seems that the Lord is far away from you. I will quote what this man said. Um, Dave Drav Dravegen, Dave Dave Dravegen said, looking back, I have learned that the wilderness is part of the landscape of faith, and every bit as essential as the mountain top. On the mountain top, we are overwhelmed by God's presence. In the wilderness, we are overwhelmed by his absence. Both places should bring us to our knees. The one in utter awe and the other in utter dependency. You might be at the mountain top now, or you might be beneath. 
The key is that we must be on our knees praying. So the more they lean on their own human effort, the Lord passed them. So the more we lean on our own human effort, it seems that the Lord is far from us. Meanwhile, the Lord is not far. So in our human eyes, we'll be like, it seems that the more I'm praying, it seems God is far from me. The question you need to ask yourself is that, am I leaning on him more? Now, the moment we begin to lean on Jesus, things begin to happen. Let's now go to verse 49. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror thinking it was a ghost. When we lean more upon our human effort, when we even see help, we think it's the devil attacking. When we see help, we think it's witches and wizards that is attacking. They thought Jesus was a ghost because they've learned, they've, they've had the mindset that he's not coming. Remember, it was, it was Jesus Christ that told them that he's coming, go, I will come and meet you. So the more we wallow in self-pity, the more we wallow our mindset and think that God is far from us, the more it seems that God is far from us, and the more the enemy expands the problem, and then he begins to put terror in your mind. He begins to tell you, it's your father's house, it's your father's house. You come from a polygamous home. Any dream you have, ah, hey, devil, devil. No. There even sometimes the Lord is speaking to you through that dream that go through this way. He speaks to you through this word you are listening to. He speaks to you through different different ways. But because your mind, you, you we become, our mind is so tiny, I don't know the English to use. We become so myopic and, you know, in a very funny way. Then, when we see Jesus coming, when we see help coming, we become fearful. So, that's why it's very important for us to pay, pray for spiritual eyes. That our spiritual eyes is open. Because when your spiritual eyes is open, when the Lord opens your spiritual eyes, you are able to discern a terror from the enemy and the one that is actually from the Lord. So they saw him. But the moment they did something, they cried out in, in error. They cried, at least they shouted, help. Even though they didn't say help. They cried and caught the attention of Jesus. They cried out. The Lord was passing them. They cried out. Have you cried out? Crying out is not just weeping and weeping. If you weep, 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 after weeping, the problem is still there. The storm is still there. Isn't it? So if you keep weeping, weeping, your eyes will just get big and big like my big eyes. <laughs> That's just on a lighter note. But when you weep, 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 it's not going to solve the problem. Weeping in the place of prayer. Like the case of Anna. I love that story so much. When the Lord changed that story. Hey, the Lord gave her a new song. Let's read for them. Now, there are certain things we need to note at things about the storm. Number one, it is when you feel most separated from God that we must realize that that storm that you're going through, when you feel most separated, is teaching you the most. That is, when you feel that, when you feel that the Lord is far, that is when you feel that, ah, why am I in the valley? The Lord is teaching you a lesson. Is making you to lean more. He's making you, you know, remember the story of Elijah. Elijah said, oh, I'm the only person. He ran away. And the Lord told him, where are thou? I can't leave you. Where are you? Why are you hiding in the cave? So the more you feel God is far, the Lord is teaching you a lesson in that storm. Telling you that where you think I am far, I am actually there. When uh, Elijah ran to the cave, the Lord was there. Everywhere he went to, the Lord was there. The Lord was with him. Everywhere my father went, he was doing good. Because I know him, he will always be there for me. So, the Lord teaches us the most when we feel separated. When you feel that I'm the only person. The Lord is giving you a lesson to learn that I'm separating you. Because I want you to lean more on me. I'm separating you to tell you that I can never leave you. The Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whether it is at the mountaintop or in the valley, in that valley, in that storm that you feel is only you, in that dark moment, the Lord is telling you, I'm with you. So he's teaching you the most. He's telling you, I am with you. Lean upon me. It's not only when I've just I've provided for you. It's not only when I've given you your request that you know that I'm with you. In that storm. So when you feel more separated, it's teaching you, it's teaching us the most. I can testify. If I begin to testify now, we're not going to finish this program. One thing I've learned, and I thank God for the storms I went through, is that it's made me lean only on God. I've realized that it is only God that can help. 
I keep saying this with confidence now. I'm somebody that I don't believe people until it is done. So that I don't get disappointed. Not that I don't trust people, but it's just that I have learned through the storms of life not to trust. That is, not, I trust you as a child of God, but when you say something to me, I don't believe until it is done. So that my hope is not raised, then you don't do it, then I feel bitter. So I don't, I don't trust, I don't, I don't uh, depend. There are a lot of people in the ministry that, in the beginning of the ministry, you see them, you know, sometimes you'll be like, oh my word, I, I keep sharing one of these sisters that, I, I looked at her as a sister that we're going to be, you know, like when you look at somebody like a contemporary, let me, let, let me train this sister in my own way. Something, I don't even know why she left, maybe because I told her the truth, and then all of them left. But it's foundation on the soil of ministry now holding. It's here. It's not going anywhere until Jesus Christ returns because it's the ministry of God. What am I saying is that because I believe that, oh, I've seen somebody who is like a sister, or oh, but eventually she left. In that particular moment, the Lord was telling me that, look, I'm only your hope. I'm the one that brings people. I'm the one, you people that go, they are going. The ones that come, I'm the one that brought them. So I've learned not to depend and look at it and say, ah, this person is a, a bona fide foundation on a solid rock ministry member. No, 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 no. So, and that must also go along in every area of our lives. So the more we think that we're in the valley, the more the Lord is teaching us to lean more and realize that he's always there for us. Number two, God doesn't show up early. Usually it comes in the worst part of the storm. When you think you can't take any more, it will be on time. When you're about to give up and say, you know what? That's when God shows up. Read that Bible person when you're after him again. That is when God shows up. When you feel like, this is not possible. How am I going to do it? The bill is here. I've lost the job. I've lost everything. The more they've, they've repossessed my mortgage or whatever it is. I just lost the pregnancy. You know, things like that. Things that you look at it that there's no hope. That's when God shows up. God doesn't show up early. Usually, it comes in the worst part. Why? To show you that he's the only one that can help you. If he shows up and you might be like, oh, it's because of this. But when he shows up, when suddenly, so like, ah, it's only God that did it. Number three, God takes us through different storms, revealing more of himself to us in each one. God takes us through different storms, revealing more of himself in each one. Otherwise, we will not understand the characters and divine strategies. We'll never understand. So some of the storms we'll go through is for us to understand the Lord more. For us to look at God in different aspects. That is, you're going to look at it that, okay, for instance, maybe there was a delay before you conceived. Maybe you got you conceived at a very long, at a young, uh, at an old time, maybe when hope, they've removed your womb. If even the womb has been removed, you will know that Jehovah is a great physician. You understand that <laughs> when God steps into your health situation, he can... Bring a sack of womb inside the stomach and put a child there. If it comes through financially, you are able to understand that it's the Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. His grace is sufficient for me. For me. So you are able to understand. So each storm in each storms will go through in, 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 in that journey of life as a child of God. It's for us to understand the character and the divine strategies of Jehovah. Though we cannot understand the Lord know him but you know you know he's your father i can relate that the lord almighty one of the things i said about the ministry is that one of the things that put fear in me is that i don't see people not all the time i see people one-on-one -on -one. through the internet the lord moves people feel the presence of god healing deliverance different things without touch the three days the deliverance program the lord just finished with a sister a hand she didn't even know it was an attack a hand she said she couldn't move it during the course of the prayer, when the Lord was saying there's somebody that is afflicted with the hand, she was able to do it. A lot of things, a lot of things that the Lord did. Different touch in the, in the revelation after the program. I didn't touch them. That one is enough to make me realize that Jehovah is omnipresent. So different storms, the storms I go through in life, makes me to know the divine capability and the character of God. Then, the last, coming to a conclusion, the moment you hear it is high, hey, our fear should be calm. Look at what Jesus Christ said. He said, do not be afraid. Take courage. I am here. <laughs> I am here. That is the word you need. And that's the word the Lord has for you this afternoon or whatever time you're connected. That 
is here with you. And that can be only that can only be altered if you have a relationship with Jesus. The rest, I'm saying this that oh the storms will come because to the glory of God I hear from the Lord, and then the Lord will tell you, Don't worry. He tells me I'm here through different encounter, different ways. I'm here through word because there's a relationship. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. He that dwelleth, you must go there. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. God is our refuge and strength in an ever-present help in times of trouble. So you can confidently say that if you have a relationship with the Lord Almighty. You can confidently say that when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that the Lord said he will never leave me. So whatever storm I'm going through is with me. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, my brother, my sister, there is danger. You know, because what the enemy will do is expand the storm. And there was something the, the, the disciples didn't even realize, that that storm, there's a spirit behind the storm. There were powers in that water that activated the storm. The powers in the water realized that apostles were here, evangelists were here, teachers were here. Let's kill them. But the devil is so, I don't know the term to use. He keeps trying. But he knows that he has lost the battle. But he will keep trying. He knows. He, I don't know whether it's dumbness or daftness. After all, he went to, he went to tempt Jesus Christ. He, oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ, he tempted him. So he will keep trying. The devil, he, he doesn't, he, he, anointing does not move him. He will just keep trying. He just keep, you know, he just keeps trying. Looking for a way to attack. But he has failed. We are fighting a battle that the Lord has already fought won the victory for us. So we have nothing to worry about. So you need to understand that whatever storm you're passing through, there's a spirit behind it. By God's grace, if the Holy Spirit helps us, we'll still come and talk about recognizing divine storms and demonic storms in the mighty name of Jesus. So for every storm, one practical thing you must do, number one, give your life to Jesus if you've not. Number two, make inquiry from the Holy Spirit. This storm is here of you of the of, of the devil. If it's devil, the Lord will tell you what to do. If it's his, he will tell you what to do. But one thing you must learn today is that we we'll all go through storm. It's only a dead person that will not go through a storm. We we'll all go through storms. The storm is to help us to develop our, our strength, faith, and to make us to lean more on the Lord Almighty. If you are connected right now, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. Today is the moment for you to give your life to Jesus. I don't know what storm you're passing through. Without Christ, it's crisis. All you need to do is say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works. Give me the grace to finish this race well in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to pray with you and tell you the practical things to do. Everlasting Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. I pray for each one of us, whatever storm we are going through, Father, please do not leave us. Help us. <clears throat> give us the strength to be able to overcome, to be able to pass the storm. In order for us to receive the testimony you have for us after the storm. Help us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And for your children that have given their life to you, Lord, my Father. You said it in your word that by no means will you cast out anyone that comes to you. The sustaining grace to finish this race, well, Father, please let it rest upon us in the name of Jesus. I pray for every satanic storm, every satanic snail satanic animal called around somebody right now that the power of god hits such individual and deliver the person in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus name every animal that is hiding to attack me attack anyone that is connected or our family members i command the fire of god to burn that animal in the name of jesus in jesus name amen 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 in the course of the prayer i saw a snake called in a corner if you've ever had a dream of a snake i saw that snake black it was called send a message asap i saw that snake it's for somebody because when i was praying the holy spirit said it's for someone and somebody that is going to that is watching saw a snake and you've been having an encounter with snakes call send me a message you might not know how i'll leave it in the description box and know that the lord almighty will help us in the i'll leave it on the screen i'll try and leave it on the screen and the description box. Make sure you do that ASAP. And I know that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. For that person that you've given your life to Jesus, congratulations. You've made the right decision. Make sure you read the word of God. 
obey the word of God, iron sharpened iron. Follow us on Facebook, um, Foundation on the Soil Rock Ministry, Matthew 7, verse 25. And as we come into the end of the year, very soon we're going to start our fasting. Prepare to join the fasting. Know that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on every social media handle. And the Lord will be with us each in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, that storm you're going through, the Lord is with you. Don't give up. Uh, there's one song I love. With Jesus in the boat, I can smile in the storm. Smile in the storm. Smile in the storm. With Jesus in the boat, I can smile in the storm. While I'm sailing on, relax, the Lord is in the boat. All you need to do is call him and say, Lord, help me, and he'll help you. Shalom.